Hey everybody. Happy Monday, July 12th. Wow. Summer is just rolling right along. We're in the middle of July. <laughs> I hate that. Summer is my best. Hope you're all doing well. Please say hello. I'd love to chat with you tonight. I'm normally on at two in the afternoon, but, um, where are my messages so I can see who's here? Hi, Laura. I'm normally here on uh, Mondays at 2, but I had some appointments for my mom today. So um, I thought, let's do this, this evening thing again. That was kind of fun last time. Hi, Donna. I believe I will be back on Tuesday at 2 in the afternoon. So I'll, for coffee and a card, but... Um, I've got a fun technique that I wanted to try tonight. I've been seeing it everywhere and um, lots and lots of um, different um, stampers are using this technique and so I wanted to give it a go and I did try it and I had some success. I was a little nervous. I didn't know if I would be able to. Um, Donna Pollock, will Stampin' Up! be sending out the mini catalogs? Great segue into what I wanted to talk about next. So let's turn the camera around. Hi, Joy. How are you? I received mine this weekend because I'm a demonstrator. We've been able to see it online, but um, they mailed them out um, recently. So I received mine. Hi, Kat. Wow. Kat is in her new RV. She's freshly retired, and she is at KOA Campground in Lyman, Colorado. How exciting. I didn't know you'd be able to join us. That's awesome. Um, I'm following your adventures on Facebook. It's so cool. Um. So start talking about the catalogs, yes, Donna, if you have ordered from me within the last <clears throat> year, I put you on the list, and you are definitely on the list, and they will be mailed out by Stampin' Up. I think they said sometime after the 18th, so maybe um, next week, um, but I can't show you the inside of mine um, because it's the rules. But also in August, um, the catalog does say July to December, and I thought they were going to change that. Because of all the shipping um, disasters, because of the COVID and all the back, backing, um, backups on the shipping, they pushed the catalog launch um, to August instead of July, but it'll be August to December. And the month of August is celebration, so you can earn free um, stamps and free paper. I can't, I don't know if there's any embellishments. <laughs> I can't remember if there were some embellishments in there, but real exciting. So for every $50 you purchase from anything that Stampin' Up! sells, you can um, or get a free gift from the Celebration brochure. Um, hi, Leslie. I mean, Kay. Kay says, hi, Leslie. Okay, you guys, you know it's Monday night and I'm tired. <laughs> Anyway, so that tells you about the catalogs. If you are, have not ordered from me and do not have a demonstrator, I would love to send you a catalog. I'm going to order them tomorrow, so I will have them to send out. Um, just let me know. Message me here in the comments or, um, you know, send me an email or whatever, and I can get catalogs to you. I also wanted to mention the designer series paper sale and I didn't take a minute to go look at anything to see if anything sold out but through um, July and August 2nd you can save 15% off of select uh, Stampin' Up! designer series paper. You can just go to leslie.stampinup.net to see that selection of papers that's there. And then I also wanted to mention for my local gals, this Saturday, I've been very late to get the information out, but it's going to be my first live class since the COVID shutdown a year ago, February. 
so February 2020 when everything all I think that was my last live class so I'm really excited I'm gonna make it super simple it's a come and go from 10 to 12 if you show up at 12 I won't kick you out <laughs> we're gonna make five really adorable cards and I will be posting those later um, this week I, I'm running my mom around to some appointments tomorrow but um, I will definitely be showing those on my social media, especially here on Facebook. Um, but it's just $5 to make two cards. I'm going to have some samples um, to look at. Um, what else? It's, it, it, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Um, goodies. There'll be some coffee and pastries and all that. Um, and then it's just $5 or free with purchase and yes I'm gonna put an event up on Facebook this evening like I said I'm very late in getting this I've been talking about it for weeks but I have been very late in getting the details out um, if you would just let me know you're coming so I know how many pre to prepare to prepare for that would be awesome but if you have a friend who wants to come last minute grab her and we will make a way okay so I'm excited for that. Um, I will have the address and all that on the event here on my Facebook page. Um, I'll get that all posted when I'm finished tonight. Okay, I need to get started because we are going to make three fun cards tonight using this fun technique. Um, and we're going to do the technique first, but here are the cards. I'm going to keep these straight. These, I've been seeing this alcohol markers, the Stampin' Blends. People are making these beautiful cards with the Stampin' Blend markers and alcohol. So we're going to make these three cards tonight. Aren't they really fun and girly? And I'm even going to do some gold foil. We're going to do a lot of stuff tonight. I'm going to do gold foil, um, die cutting, um, and I'll have uh, lots of lots of tips to share. So um, thank you all for joining me. Um, okay, let's see. Like I said, since I took last week off, kind of, we went to Branson. If you're familiar with Missouri, <laughs> Branson, we always take our kids and grandkids once a year to um, Branson. And this was our weekend to do that. So we do fishing and boating and go-kart riding and <laughs> we do a lot of things. So I'm going to do all of the, the alcohol te techniques and I'm doing this on vellum. It, you can use a card, a, a card stock that I have been seeing around also and I meant to write it down. I think it's called Hupo paper or Poopo paper. <laughs> It's a really uh, strange name of paper, and when I get done, I'll put it in the comments. Um, I'm using vellum, but you want some kind of paper that doesn't, um, what am I saying, that doesn't absorb, because you want that ink to sit right on top of the paper, so that's why I'm using vellum. And I think I'm going to move these out of the way so they don't get all messed up. And we're going to get, pull out our vellum pieces for these cards. Hopefully I'm organized, but if you have been following me for very long, you know I try. Doesn't necessarily mean I am. And I'm going to show you a couple ways that I tried this this afternoon. It was so much fun to play with. Um, this one is... Hi, Sally Sayhill. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this one here, I even added a little gold foil. So I'm going to do that one first. And I'm using three colors that I thought would look good together. I'm using Daffodil Delight, Magenta Madness, and um, Bermuda Bay. And these are our alcohol markers. They're Stampin' Blends. They are um, the darker color. You, when you buy the Stampin' Blends, you get them in a combo. And I found that these darker uh, markers work better than the um, 
the lighter ones. And then you're also going to need alcohol, but it has to be over 90%. I didn't test it, but I the, what I've been seeing all over the place is why I wanted to try it, is you can't use anything less than 90%. And I found this at um, Walmart. So I'm going to use that. And I'm also using a... Um, this is the old school aqua painter that Stampin' Up! carries, and I forgot to refill it after I got done today. Um, Stampin' Up! has better ones now, a set of three different ones. <laughs> I'm making a mess, but that's okay. I put this craft mat down. I just bought this years ago. I don't even remember where. But um, I'm sure you can get them on Amazon. They're called craft mats, and you can put ink on them. You can put water on them, and it all just kind of wipes wipes off. Adhesive, and this is so old. The ones they're making now are probably much better than this one, but this is the one I use all the time for messy stuff like this. Okay, so I'm going to take my piece of vellum, and we're going to work on this card. And I'm just taking the paint, um, I like to use the brush end of the Stampin' Blend marker, and these are alcohol markers. They have to be alcohol markers. You cannot use um, your Stampin' Write markers. And I'm just going to scribble on this. I'll try and copy how I did. But each piece is going to turn out different than, than the other. So spilled alcohol all over here so we might start start our process <laughs> right away okay so see I just scribbled that right on there now I'm going to take my aqua painter and I'm not even going to use the brush you could but you have to be careful and clean your brush off between colors otherwise they kind of muddle together and get a little muddy so I'm just going to, if you have an eyedropper, that would be good too. I'm just kind of squeezing it and dropping drops all over. And you'll start to see um, the paint kind of move around. Now, the more you put on there, the more it's going to dilute. See how you can see the paint or ink moving around? I'm going to take my um, heat tool and put it on low. I'm going to use a tweezer to hold my vellum down here. And I'm just going to move the ink around with my heat tool. You'll see all that liquid just kind of... I kind of didn't want that magenta madness to get too close to the Bermuda Bay because it gets a little muddy. The yellow, the Daffodil Delight, and the Bermuda Bay look really good together. And I really soaked this one. I'm just going to pick up my paper towel and get that extra off of there. Let's see how it's making kind of a marble effect. And on our next one, I'm going to show you a different way to do this. I was talking too much and I put probably too much liquid on, but it's working. And it dries really fast because it is an alcohol ink. Uh, Donna Pollock says she's seen some do this technique with spritzers. Yes. Let me show you a something. I didn't try this this afternoon, but I thought about it. Um, no, I just have 70% alcohol in that spritzer, so I better not. But you can just kind of spritz it on there with a, a spritzer. Now I'm just drying it. See how it just kind of makes a marbleized effect? Now it's pretty dry from the um, heat tool. I'm gonna wipe off all the excess here. And we're gonna add the gold foil. Whoops, 
What am I pointing at? Isn't that pretty? So how I did that is I took my Versamark refill, and I don't know if, if there's a better way to do this or not, but this is how I did it. And I just squirted some on my craft mat, or you could squirt it on a block, you know, just a, just an acrylic block. And then I took just a little craft paintbrush that I had, just a cheapie, and I just kind of painted in with that Versamark just little areas. Okay, and it gets a little thick. I think I'll put a little right there. You know, you can put as little or as much as you want. I think I'll put a little kind of down here. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my bucket, my bucket O. <laughs> um, I have my ceiling fan on. Hopefully, we don't have a disaster. I might have to jump up and go turn that off. This is the Gold Leafing by Stampin' Up. And I just keep it in one of these Dollar uh, Tree tubs. And I always work over the tub because it's very light. It's lighter than a feather and it flies everywhere. So I just dumped the whole container in here and this is where I keep it when I use it. So it's going to stick to that... Um, Versamark, which is, Versamark is just, um, it's called a watermark stamp pad, but it's kind of a, a sticky ink. So it has a little um, bluish property to it. Is bluish a word? <laughs> oh. And then I just have this little, um, it's a stencil stencil brush is what it is and I'm going to brush the excess off and I'm going to set this aside to dry it's better to kind of let it dry a little bit because since we painted that Versamark on there it's kind of thick and I don't want to um, brush off all of my gold foil so I just want to keep a little bit on there looking good already hi Kathy Hope you're doing good. My stencil brush that I use is a little stiff. If you have a soft brush, it just depends on the effect you want. I just wanted it to look like I've got, you know, a little veining of gold, gold veining in here. And you can kind of use your fingers and press it down. You're in Branson? We just came home from Branson. We got home yesterday. It was hot. <laughs> it was hot this weekend in Branson, but it, we had a good time. Okay. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to set this aside and let it dry, and we'll put all of our cards together at the end. But that is how I put the gold foil on this one. Just with a little paintbrush and that Versamark refill. And this, the Versamark washed right out of the brush. So don't worry, and then you could maybe keep this for... Um, Just for that purpose, your Versamark brush. And I really like the back side too. You could use either side, but moving on. Okay, this next one, it's basically, I'm going to show you a different technique, if not using the heat tool. So I'm going to take this piece of Versamark and tomorrow, well, I don't know, I'm busy running around all day tomorrow, but maybe Wednesday I'll have all the card recipes on my blog, um, thepladpoodle.com. So um, check out over there 
and um, I'll have all the card recipes over there on by end of day Wednesday. That that'll be my Wednesday project. <laughs> Okay, this one, I just made a little scrap, and again, I'm using the um, magenta. I'm going to try and just recreate what I did. Magenta Madness. I just really liked how these three colors um, kind of went together. I tried to keep the Bermuda Bay a little bit away from the Magenta Madness because I felt like it would kind of get muddy. Donna likes how deep the colors are. Yeah, it's really cool how it works. Now this one I don't think I'm going to get as wet. And like I said, you could touch it with your painter and kind of move it around that way. Um, but then you have to clean it, your brush tip off after you do each color. Now this is going to be weird, you guys, but I'm just taking a straw and I've seen them do this. And I'm blowing that ink. Isn't that cool? I, I saw someone recommend, you know those little baby snot nose cleaners? Little suction things? I saw someone recommend one of those for this. But it's been a long time since we've had baby snot nose suckers in our house. So I am just using a straw, but see how cool that is? Now there's a couple little places I'm going to fill in with a little bit of more, little bit more color. Because I want to fill it all up. I was trying to think of some different color combinations. Um, I thought th this one went together good. If you were making like a seascape card, um, some blues and greens would be beautiful. Okay. That is the, here, let me get my heat tool out and we'll dry this a little bit. I kind of prefer the heat tool, I don't know why, over the straw effect. But you can just, whoop. You can just play with it. This is the one we use the heat tool. There's not much difference. And your vellum does kind of curl up, but we'll we'll adhere it down to our card and it'll it'll be fine. Try that one a little bit more. So that one goes there. Okay, one more. This one was really fun. And where I got the inspiration for this last one. It's from the annual catalog, um, one of our designer series papers, the um, Inked in Expressions, I think it's called. Expressions in Ink. If you have an annual catalog, it's on page 131. Um, and I looked at some of those papers and kind of took my inspiration for, from that for this card. Um, let me grab my piece of vellum. Like I said at the beginning, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a catalog, I would be happy to send one to you. Oh, here's my. Just message me and we'll get one out. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to just kind of work up from the corner at an angle. So I'm going to use my Bermuda Bay. 
And as you can tell, you really don't need to be an artist to do this. Because <laughs> it's just a bunch of scribbles. Okay, let's add a little bit of our alcohol. And if you are if you came in late, you have to use rubbing alcohol that is at least 91%. Until I was reading about this technique, I did not know that alcohol came in different percentages. Um, but I got mine at Walmart, 91. They have smaller bottles, but I thought I might use this technique quite a bit. So I got the bigger bottle. Sorry, I don't mean to get my hands in there. You can kind of roll it around too, like I'm doing. Oh my gosh, you guys, we just got a scammer on here. Sorry about that. I don't know if I can delete right now, but I will definitely go later and delete Mr. or Mrs. Hassan's <laughs> comment. Okay, that one has a lot, I'm going to add a little bit more. I don't like those empty puddles. I think I squeeze too much alcohol on them. See how this one is more fluid, if that's a word. I'll just play with it some more. When I get on here and go live, I tend to kind of hurry through because I don't want to bore y'all. <laughs> and this afternoon, I kind of took more time. There we go. Okay. Oh my gosh. If anybody would like to see if they can delete Mr. Hassan off of here, that would be awesome. I don't know if you have to be an admin to do that. I'm going to use the straw for this second one. So pretty. Just love it. Okay, I'm going to dry this off a little bit. And then we'll put our cards together. Oops. Oh, I like that much better. I like how that Bermuda Bay turned out down there. got a little bit more marble effect. Okay. That's good. All right, I'm going to move my craft mat out of the way so you can see better. And let's, let's, was this our first one? No, 
I am not our first cow. This one. Here we go. Let's do this one because it'll be the driest. And I just took an eight and a half by five and a half inch piece of um, basic white cardstock. I'm going to layer it. <laughs> I think I did the right one. Okay. I told you guys. I need a piece of, here it is. I picked up the wrong card kit. Here we go. Same thing. Eight and a half by five and a half. They do make great backgrounds, Kay. And they're so easy. All right. So I took a piece of, this is just a piece of Magenta Madness cardstock to coordinate back with my ink color and it measures five by four and a fourth but again if you'll be patient and wait till Wednesday I will have the card recipes up over on my blog I'm just too tired to be able to do it tonight <laughs> hi Letha yeah they are very elegant like I said if you like if you were doing a seaside with some seashells or some marine life, they would be really pretty with some greens and blues. Okay, then just to give this a really nice background, I adhered it to um, a piece of basic white cardstock. And I just used my um, multi-purpose liquid glue. Look at the back. The back is even pretty. Just really. So it'd be fun to play around with some colors. Maybe in the fall for some fall cards. Um, let me grab my silicone. Went a little crazy with the glue. Um. Some oranges and browns and rust colors would be really pretty. It's my scrap. <laughs> okay, so I'm just backing it with the basic white so when I plop it on my card front, it's going to show um, really nice. And we're going to trim off the... Um, trim off the excess here. I'll just make these about I'm not really sure what I'm trimming this to. <laughs> But it, it's going to work. Cut that over there. And I trimmed the wrong one because this is the... I told you, girls. That one will work for that card. So we're going we're gonna to do the same thing on this one. We're going to trim it up. I've got my card kits all... What do you call it? Mixed up. Yeah. No, I need a piece of basic white. Which I have right here. And I'm going to cut that about two by four and a half. normally only do one card so <laughs> it's pretty great that I'm not messed up yet I've got these three kits going here at the same time there we go perfect 
I found that using this glue, it didn't show through. You know, normally with vellum, you kind of have to be careful. But I think with all the paint and everything, it doesn't um, it doesn't show through your adhesive. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love that. I think this is my favorite. Okay, then we're going to stamp our happy birthday. And the stamp set I'm using on all three cards tonight is the Art Gallery stamp set. This, is, this came out in the spring catalog, but carried over to our annual catalog. They have coordinating dies, which we are going to use tonight. We're going to use this die, this die, and this die, and this, this die. We're going to use several of the dies. Okay, I am going to wrap some, on my sample here, I've got some gold um, twine, but I used it all on my sample, so I'm going to just use some of this um, baker's twine. I think this is Blushing Bride, I'm not sure, like I said, I'll have a list of products I will have a list of products that I used um, in the description when I get done tonight. I will put that. But for all the nitty gritty stuff, you can look over on my blog on Wednesday afternoon. Sorry it's going to take that long, but my mom has two appointments tomorrow. So I wrapped that around three times. Sometimes I can work while she's in an appointment, so I might might surprise everybody and get it done tomorrow, but I'm not sure. Okay. So I just wrapped that around a little um, basic white cardstock. I've got tape and everything else all over. And then I'm going to stamp my um, happy birthday with the um, Magenta Madness ink. Stay with the theme. <laughs> Kay says fall would be fun. I think fall colors would be awesome with this technique. Okay, then I'm gonna pop this up with some dimensionals. For some reason, this one looks weird. There we go. So I'm just gonna put some dimensionals on here. Hey, Rebecca. Pop that right in the middle. Probably could have trimmed the ends down a little bit to show my twine a little bit better, but it's too pretty to cut. <laughs> I didn't want to cut it. And then I just um, adhered that down with some stamp and seal. Oh, this one's still a little wet. Okay, that's the first card. Isn't that pretty? Here's the one, the sample. It's a little smaller, a little more narrow. They're still pretty. Don't you love that gold foil? Love it. Okay, let's do this one next because the other one will take a little minute and we'll get this one going. Again, I've got an eight and a half by five and a half inch card base. And then I embossed a piece of the Magenta Madness with the um, painted texture 
embossing folder. I love this embossing folder. It's probably my new favorite embossing folder. And this piece measures five by five and a fourth by four. And I just kind of got it on there crooked. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay, here's our little piece um, that we did. And I'm going to cut it down to fit what is this one? This one is three and three fourths, so I'm going to cut this down to three and a half. I'm going to trim a little of that gold foil paper. This is one and three quarters, so I'm going to make this two inches. I'm getting glue, glue fingerprints all over it. Oh, just love it. I just thought the gold really went well with that pink. <laughs> so this sample's a little bigger <laughs> and this one's a little smaller. Now, the just want to say die comes, it matches the, um, or it coordinates with the um, art gallery stamp set. And I'm going to cut that out of a little piece of the gold foil. I think I have a piece big enough. Here we go. Yep. I thought I cut that good. <laughs> Thank you guys. And then I'm going to use my little mini here. And then I'm going to do my technique. Hold on, I'm going to grab my, um, I'm going to grab my um, press and seal. Hi, Carol. Yeah, I went live tonight. Oops, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. There we go. The press and seal. I think I've shown this trick before. But I love it for things like this. We want to put that little, um, just want to say die. Carol, we will pray for your daughter. She's having back surgery tomorrow. Oh. Her name is Jennifer. I will add her to my list.
neck surgery. Oh my goodness. We will pray that the surgeons have um, skill beyond their measure. That they will be assisted by our Heavenly Father. Her recovery will be fast. Okay, here is the press and seal. <laughs> Here's the sticky part. So this is how I do it when I have those little things. Stick them all where I want them. And then I'm going to grab some scissors, cut some of this off here. Now if I would have used an adhesive sheet, I could just peel the backing off and lay it right on there, but I didn't. So we're going to just use our um, multi-purpose liquid glue that doesn't want to come out now. <laughs> I'm going a little longer tonight because it is the evening and um, normally I try and keep things um, under 30 minutes but I wanted to show you the technique and then I just got crazy this afternoon made three cards so I thought let's make all three cards so thank you girls for hanging in okay then you just stick that right where you want it with your press and seal Mondays are pretty good days for me because I don't have, uh, my grandkiddos are done with ball for the summer, so my schedule has kind of freed up a little bit. All right, and then on the inside of this card, I just stamped the thank you in magenta madness. And I stamped the little flower in the corner. And this is a two-step flower. I don't know if you can see the difference on camera, but there is a difference because the second one was a little darker. And I just got pink ink all over that card. This one I did do a little gold foil. This is actually a die cut that I made and just stuck on there, but this one I just stamped. And I'll use my little eraser and get that off, maybe. <laughs> so that's number two. And then our final card, this one will go together pretty quick, but we're going to also do some of that gold foil on here. Again, an eight and a half by five and a half. Um, card base and then I'm going to add a layer of this is just jade we use the um, Bermuda Bay alcohol marker on our uh, vellum but I thought it really um, coordinated well with the just jade once it was kind of um, what do you call it <laughs> Then I'm going to add, after it was watered down, but not really watered down, alcohol down. After it had a little alcohol, then I'm going to add a gold foil, sh gold foil sheet. I'm getting blue everywhere. And then, like I did before, I'm going to adhere this to a piece of um, basic white cardstock with some 
of my liquid glue. We'll trim it down here in a minute. Rebecca, you oh, it sticks to the surrounding area? It just takes a little bit of practice. Just a little bit. straight edge here so everything will work from that straight edge just to trim off those edges The background, uh, this background, Carol, this is the um, alcohol ink background. We did this earlier. You must have missed it, but yes, we made this earlier. So maybe you can watch the replay or it'll be on my YouTube channel tonight. Um, but yeah, we made this with our three Stampin' Blend markers and 91% alcohol. You have to have to use the nine, 90 or above is what I'm told. So I didn't want to play around. <laughs> and I am going to adhere this to the card front. We're almost done. This is my favorite, I think. <laughs> but I just said that this one was my favorite, so I can't decide. Okay, then I made the little flower, and that comes from the Art Gallery stamp set, and we're going to stamp that onto some basic white with the Magenta Madness. Use a little scrap paper and... I'm going to stamp off on this flower once. And then I'm going to take the center. And I'm not going to stamp this off. And I did that wrong, y'all. Never mind. We're going to do this again. I am going to also... Pull in. When you use photopolymer stamps, it really helps to have a soft surface underneath. So I always use my um, piercing mat, paper piercing mat. Then I'm going to use this stamp <laughs> at full throttle. See how those two-step stamps really give it dimension when you do it right? <laughs> then I'm going to wash this one off and we're going to do a little gold foil on this one. I can't get enough of that gold foil tonight. But I want to make sure I get that pink off of there. And dry that off. I'm going to use the Versamark. And I'm going to stamp right on top of that flower with the Versamark. And remember, this is kind of the Versamark is kind of a gluey ink.
and I'm going to grab my um, gold foil and just press that down in there. And then take my little brush and kind of brush it off. And it didn't stick very well. We might have to redo. Sometimes I get a little anxious to brush it off. Got a little bit on there. Not as good as my first sample. Where's it at? Well, pretty good. Just just a few little spots on there, which is all I wanted. So that turned out pretty good. Uh, we're going to cut that out with the die, the coordinating die. And I'm also going to stamp the little leaves. forgot about the leaves. And I am going to stamp those in the Just Jade. To pull that paper out. We're going to stamp off once on this one as well. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> do there. That ought to work. And then we will cut these out with our dies. Use a little bit of repositional tape on these. I think I just officially decided that this is my favorite card <laughs> that we did tonight. I'll let you guys vote which your favorite is. I don't putts. I'm going to have to cut this apart. See if I can get it this way. There we go. All right, so what I did, on, oh, I forgot to do the sentiment. Y'all, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I did that in the Bermuda Bay. And I did the I'm thinking of you. And I cut that out with one of the dies. They have these sentiment dies. You know how I usually do this all ahead of time so y'all don't have to watch me die cut everything, but I wanted to show you how the gold foil works. Very easy. Okay, let's put this little card together. Got a little adhesive on that one. Oh! That looks so good. So I'm going to pop this flower up with some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm keeping my Dimensionals kind of in the middle so I can tuck some leaves 
No, I'm not tucking leaves. Never mind. I must have changed my mind about the leaves. You stamped and cut those leaves for no reason, girls. Okay, so I can use that on another project. I think I thought about using the leaves and it didn't look right. So now we're going to add our tag. Put a little stamp and dimensional right here on the end. Kind of showing. Can't have that. There we go. And then I'll put a little glue right here. I'm going to put that right there so it doesn't cover up any of my gold foil and then I do have enough of that gold cord to make a bow <laughs> I just didn't save enough for that other card I just have used this stuff to death I love it but I have just enough to make a bow a simple little bow to put there in the corner of that tag and the flower. I'm going to put a little drop of the um, glue I do too Carol because <laughs> I use this stuff up but I think I still have the other that comes with it have to think of some ways to use that up. My hands are so sticky. I'm trying to make my bow. There we go. Needs to go a little cattywomp. And then I'm gonna get some of that off. Got a little glue here. I don't know. Sometimes you get adhesive on that gold foil. You can make it really worse <laughs> by messing with it. Okay, that's the third card. So here's our first card. And here is our second card. Let's see, I'll do this one. And there's our third card. All using the alcohol technique. And I have been on here an hour. I am so sorry. I usually, like I said, like to keep it at uh, 30 minutes. But um, we made three cards tonight. <laughs> so, um, and learned a lot of different things. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, don't forget the um, designer series paper sale right now, 15% off select um, papers. And then if you're local to me, um, I hope you can come Saturday. And like I said, I will have an event on there on my Facebook page. And if you would just say coming so I can prepare um, for enough prepare for you enough. We'll have two cards, um, treats, and samples to, to look at, and um, a lot of fun. So I hope you can come to that. It's kind of introducing my back to life classes. You are welcome to wear a mask. I will have hand sanitizer um, at the stations. Um, if you aren't vaccinated, I would suggest you wear a mask, but I'm not going to ask if you're, I'm not going to ask for proof of you. I am not going to uh, do that, but um, you are welcome to wear a mask. There you go. If you have any questions, um, be sure and reach out to me, and I will talk to you on Wednesday for Coffee and a Card, 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.